it is time to delve into the main topic of discussion this morning and we're, we're still going back and forth with the you know whole sudan story and you know um getting stuck at the border at egypt and you know all <clears> the conversations around that uh, let's just delve into it immediately you know fewer than 637 nigerians have been stranded at the aswan border for the past four days as the egyptian authorities deny them passage the egyptian authorities however finally agreed to open its border for nigerians stranded in sudan to come in the gesture is, however, coming with a stringent condition and guidelines. Over 100 Nigerians are trapped <clears> in a village called Wadi Halfa, less than 100 kilometers away from Egypt, over bus fares. It was gathered that the Nigerian ambassador in Egypt and other officials were at the border waiting to receive the student, but they could not cross the last uh, cross last night. It was further gathered that while Egypt is asking for security clearance, the Sudanese soldiers were extorting the students. Sources have alleged that the Nigerian authorities didn't negotiate with their Egyptian counterparts to secure permission for the students to enter their country. <coughs> this is also posing a serious challenge to the repatriation process. Uh, joining us to have this conversation today is Dr. Dayo Kayede. He is a political technocrat. Good morning, Doctor. You're welcome. Yeah, it's my pleasure being with you this morning. Uh, George, it's my pleasure being with you too. <laughs> Good morning. Yes. How has it been? Very well. Just let me put on my tie too so I can be like you this oh, morning. That's eh? nice. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. uh, yes, let's get into it. Sorry about that, Josh. Um, there's been this, you know, like I just read out. The Nigerian authorities didn't do negotiate. Their, yeah, very they didn't well. do their homework. Properly. And my mind went to the ambassador, mm. Nigerian ambassador <laughs> to to uh, Egypt. Yeah, what is he supposed to be doing there? Mm. What capacity has he when it comes to to diplomatic issues? What's his background when it also comes to uh, taking charge? Of Nigerians abroad then what kind what kind of uh, free mind is he having before because you don't just you don't just appoint ambassadors when you're talking of an ambassador it's like the head of state of its nation in that country mm. head of state to one citizens of that country head of state to nigeria in that country so such a person must be versatile when it comes to especially international relations and the issue in sudan calls for that mm -hmm. you already know that the next country to Egypt, Sudan, is in crisis. You have an ambassador there, a co-ambassador there. How have you been relating with that co-ambassador to be able to ensure that your citizens are safe in Sudan? And if they are not safe, what kind of passage arrangement can you make for them to pass through where you are and then cause them back home safely mm -hmm. and that's why i was trying to raise such questions imagine i mean it's it's appalling for somebody like me to be reading that the egyptian authorities are not aligned Nigerians is the passage from that place back home. Bearing in mind that we have a bilateral agreement with them, this is the fact that we both belong to AU, and this is the fact that we have ambassador there. EU, you mean? Sorry, no, AU, AU. African Union. Oh, okay. Talk less of even the recent the recent uh trade uh, trade agreement 
that the whole of Africa signed. Free trade zone. Sure. So what exactly? Who, who exactly is creating that experienced lapses mm. that we experienced in the past few days Do and is causing our our co-Nigerians. Do you think it's an Egyptian thing? I mean, Egypt is a totalitarian country. And, you know, that, that kind of makes them very different from, you know, their governance different from what we are used to. It's not a democracy. And if you, if you look at the list of things that they were demanding, you know, stringent security checks because, you know, they're very weary of um, enemies taking the opportunity to, uh, you know, seep into their territory. Do you think that is what kind of slowed down or, you know, derailed the negotiation? Or, uh, you know, are you hanging it perpetually around the Nigerian... Whether it's totalitarian there? or democratic, mm. it still doesn't matter because they are still human beings. Mm. It's, just, it's just that the form of gov government is government. The form might be different, but government is government. When there was war in Liberia, were we not having a, a retired uh, general Babangida, right? Yeah, Babangida mm -hmm. in power. And we knew all he did. Were we not accommodating Liberians here? In Nigeria? That's why the father we were having military rule. Why? Because they have a responsive Ambassador, ambassador, whatever, whatever form of government there, who signed the credentials of our of our ambassador, Nigerian ambassador to Egypt? Is it not still the same so-called totalitarian government? Mm -hmm. You can you can be there without your credentials being sent there through your 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 your. Or, or head of state, or president, whichever you call it. So, it is, it is a show, honestly, of shame to the representative of Nigerian government in Egypt for us to have experienced this. It's, it's, it's not expected at all. But then again, but then again, on the other side, how will other countries place value on Nigeria, on Nigerians, mm -hmm. when the government itself is placing no value on its people? And that's why we have been seeing this kind of treatment, untold hardship in various countries. Look at what happened to Nigerians in South Africa of recent. Despite the amount of money we spent to free that country, but look at the way we're being treated. It's the name you call yourself that I call you, isn't it? It's the name you call yourself that I call you, okay? So it's the name we're calling ourselves to the whole world that the whole world is calling us. Isn't that appalling for even Canada to be aligned certificates from Ghana to walk straight away in, in Canada? But that of Nigeria, we have to first of all go through some other certifications. I mean, and in the days of you, go to our Nigerian universities. You see foreigners trying to come there. Foreigners trying to come and learn in our universities. Because you know why? We're having the necessary facilities and infrastructure. For you to know, for you to know how far, go and visit University of Ibadan Zoo. Even just the zoo, it is it is now a shadow of what it was when I was younger, in in, in my elementary elementary ages. That our parents normally take us there to look at those animals, but go there now and see. Go to other universities. I mean. You are you are you are not i mean you are privy to how many months asu was on strike recently mm. so these are things that international community normally put together to address us okay. to treat us 
you know, All right, now let me let me bolt in here, sorry, uh, Debbie. Um, Uche, sorry. Um, on the other divide, there is these reactions in the air, especially from Nigerians, on the part of the leadership of um, Abike Dabiri as regards the segregation of um, residents or citizens of Nigeria, especially from the southeast, being, you know, left behind, aside from other, you know, regions that have already been you know, um, commuted or evacuated from that particular area. What's your view on that? You see, I've, uh, since after elections, I have tried as much as possible to leave, to leave a uh, political affiliation scenarios. Okay? And they're uh, trying as much as possible to see how we Nigerians can settle down for proper governance. But it is a pity that even those that are supposed to encourage this are the ones still promoting it. Mm. Elections are over. Are we not all Nigerians? We are bound to have our own different affiliations. I was giving you a scenario just now as regards why I was not appearing somewhere and this and that. And but elections are over. We come back as a people. It's it's so it's so embarrassing. So embarrassing that somebody in the stature of Abike Dabri can be doing that in far away Sudan. Mm -hmm. Are they not Nigerians? Are they not holding our green passport? But could there have been any fundamental reason for what was you, done? Why should we be talking about when we are talking about life? Life we are talking about now. What concerns you with state of origin? No, tell me. What concerns you with state of origin? And you can see where this our archaic belief in state of origin has led us. I've been clamoring for over four years that we should escape from state of origin in any form we are even feeling in any form even jam form entrance forms uh, uh schools uh what do we call it secondary school entrance forms hmm. do you understand it is better for us to say state of residence state of residence I have seen forms, I have filled forms in UK before. Mm. I have filled forms in, in Austria before. I have filled forms in America before. These are people that we have been copying. I have never seen state of origin. Rather, state of residence. And if you go to another place, you change your residence. You feel a form that you have changed residence from probably Maryland to Virginia, or from Virginia to Austin, or from Austin to somewhere like uh, 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 Columbus in Ohio. What concerns me with state of origin? What concerns me? Mm. So the and then to the extent that you're not using that one to discriminate in far away Sudan. Now tell me, how will those people respect us? How will they respect us? They won't respect us. Because they know, they know that we are not one people. Even though we are one Nigeria. Mm. I clamor for one Nigeria. I always look for what is going to further, further enmesh our cohesion. But it's a pity. Some people out there, they strongly believe that no, Nigeria cannot work. Certainly, Nigeria cannot work. But then, look at it from somebody like that. Now, what, appalling. Do you, what, what do you think could be done to address this issue of state of origin as against state of residence? I think, I think the, 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 the old gamut of uh, state of origin now rests on the incoming National Assembly to legislate upon it. Yes, I think it's, it's crossing my mind that I probably I'm going to write a letter 
Mm. And I'm going to make it very open, open letter to the National Assembly to legislate against state of origin. Even when, even if, if you don't want to par with it, let us always mellow it down and then upgrade state of residence. You are not from Lagos State, but you live in Lagos State. You earn your living in Lagos State. You pay your taxes in Lagos State. Which one should be more paramount? Yes, you have your you have your grandmas, your grandpas, your nephews, cousins in your village. You will see, go there and visit them. But when you go to visit, how many days do you spend? Mm. Nobody, even 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 the leader of your community might not know that you were there before you leave. So tell me, which one is more paramount? Your closest neighbor is your nest of kin. Your closest neighbor is the nest of king. So why burden ourselves with state of origin instead of state of residence? Go and look at a lot of Igbos who have intermarried even in this in, in this Lagos. There's a neighbor of mine there. We've known each other. We have been neighbors since like 2002. Then I want to say I don't know his children, in which his own children and my own children, best of friends. We share the same friends. We are not discriminated against him. We are not saying he's not a Yoruba man. He even speaks Yoruba. The day, the day I had the wife, uh, uh, even speaking in uh, Yoruba parable, I have to peep like Baba Ali Oko. They say, ah, madam, so you can, I mean, I don't know that you can speak your word like this. Uh, no, you, you understand? Uh, let's bring it back to, you know, let's not deviate <laughs> from <laughs> the Sudan issue. Uh, so there's been, uh, it's still bordering on, you know, not negotiating properly. Uh, there's been a lot of things that have not been done properly from the beginning of this whole conversation. I mean, how's that? Even Nigerians had to be like among the last countries to evacuate their sure. people. But then... Um, they're like orphans there's been talks about the bus drivers that were hired in the news we heard that they were paid 120 million to be able to repatriate these people from sudan to egypt preparing them for airlift and then these buses were stopped in the middle of nowhere and the drivers were complaining of uh they've not received their complete payment we've also heard in the news how that these students were being extorted by sudanese uh, soldiers uh, 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 how, how do you react to you know these buses being left in the middle of a desert knowing how dangerous it has become you know in a, in a war situation like we have in Sudan thanks for even bringing this one up you see this thing we always call Nigerian factor I don't have to say that I hope one day it will not kill us, but it's killing us gradually. Mm. Even to the extent that one of the buses was labeled Katsina One, the one that got burnt. Did you read the news, no, uh, the news too? How can we pay such a humongous amount of money to hire a boss and that same boss? will not be in a good condition. Hmm. Okay? That it will not be in a good condition. With the description I read, as regards that incident, most likely, the brakes of the tire was not properly fixed, was not checked, and the thing got hot or whatever, because uh, from the news, the fire started from one of the tires. And thank God, the driver noticed the, the par perhaps the odor or the smoke that was coming out. He parked. People came out before the thing busted into flames. It's, I mean, it was in the news. I read it as a breaking news at about 11 p.m. I said, wow. I read to the extent of the number of that particular bus was Katsina 1. 
do they have Katsina in Sudan? Do you understand? So why why should it now be our own bosses that were more expensive than others? Instead of you to find a way to take care of these people, you were leaving them to a situation that were highly inclement. You were exposing them to danger. Don't worry. After this administration, you will see that some people will inquire into what has happened for you to know the torrent the torrent now of the flowing water underneath the bridge and that's the truth the truth will, the truth will always come out but you think this that situation could have been handled in a better way that's exactly what i'm saying it have been, it, it's supposed to have been handled in a better way but we have been talking about the nigerian situation mm. When somebody, when somebody has done this, eh, leave it. It's Nigerian situation. Ah, leave it. But, but one, could have said, one could have said, well, anything could happen because this is an automobile. But what I'm saying is that are there certain things that one could have checked before they hire those bosses? That is what I'm saying. See, when you're talking of... Because someone could just say, is, yes, people are trying to blow it out of proportion. No, it cannot me, happen on a normal day. I, I, as it concerns automobiles, especially when it comes to public transportation, mm. you must be safety conscious. As old as my own car is, I said, take it to, was it on, I think about three days ago, I went to my mechanic. He said, oh, God, what has happened? I said, it's my normal check. Oh, let me check my ball joints because i know our roads ain't good and where and what is it that can disappoint you your ball joint you have to check i see a recent i had my fan belt whenever i start my car in the morning it makes noise he checked it he said oh guy is okay that if he should readjust it that's in my court i was coming this morning Somebody will say, Oh, God, your tire is going down. I just like that. I said, It's okay. I'm planning to go and buy because I already, I'm already aware mm -hmm. that that tire needs to be changed. As I'm finishing from here, you here, I'm going to where I'm going to change those t uh, two tires. Not to now talk of a public transport vehicle. You must check your brakes. Take your brakes, take your tires, the, the pressure on those tires, ensure you have a functional uh, spare tire. Your jacks, your whisperer, your everything must be there. So the so the, the issue now does it does it boil down to the driver of that vehicle I who was say, negligent or those who manage that particular project? I will say it. the driver. Because as you are now, as you are now, you won't be, you people won't be as proficient as you are here if you have one of the management staff, top management staff, making deals with you. Okay? Mm -hmm. If the cameraman, if the cameraman is caught here, stealing your equipment find out very well there's a management staff behind it okay so i will not query the driver rather i will query those people that contracted those drivers i mean imagine them stopping on the on the highway stopping middle of the way that they aren't going to go again until they are being paid nigerian factor that means along the line, there have been some kind of, they call it guru guru, mago mago, along the line. 
Now, they are stopping over, you know, midway that they won't go due to the fact that they've not been paid. Is it exactly. that, is well, it that, well, is it that well, the balance payment was not made or the upfront payment wasn't made in the first place? Was the 120 million a part payment? Do the, the amount we because we need to understand what, what is this. Into what this I'm saying is this issue. What is the contractual agreement? There must be a contractual agreement. Do you understand? I mark you in that contractual agreement. If you are making a contractual agreement with me and you are telling me to to build your own inside, I will see you as somebody who is not sincere. Eh? In a situation of war like that. Mm. You are now, you are now one. I'm not saying that is what happened, though. I'm only making, I mean, I'm only giving an analogy. In a situation of war like that, you want me to help you to evacuate your citizens. I don't give a hood now, they are not my own citizens because I'm not from Nigeria. I mean, I'm talking of the driver there. And then you are now telling me, please, yes, I know it's supposed to be hundred dollars, but you tell you should put it there that it is one fifty dollars. So that I can, I will take that fifty dollars back. All right. I know you are not in Nigeria now, and I know definitely you are you are in a state of being on my own mercy. I will first of all take the part payment. Then I will now tell you, pay your boy, come. Is it only you that is wise? You want to take your fifty dollars from me? No. Let us see how we split it too. Then all I do is I will stop because I know you will have pressure on you. There will be pressure on you to get those people evacuated. Those people who are not dumps. You don't understand. So now what I'm saying, what kind of contractual agreement do they have? So the Nigerian, Nigerian, Nigerian government, in fact, the civil society should probe into it, especially uh, 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 budget, budget and, uh, and uh, this other one. They should go into it. And let us know who, who and who are giving us further bad names in the international community which we belong to. Mm. All right. Uh, 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 situations like this, I, I liked that you called it Nigerian factor because it's not new. Uh, we've, we're, we're used to being embarrassed, you know, in this manner. But while we are in the in in the season where we're trying to stay positive and keep our fingers crossed, what are the things that you would expect that the incoming government will take away from this situation? <clears throat> what lessons do we have to learn from it as a nation? Hmm. Much much as uh, I've taken away myself from uh, politicking and all that, mm. <clears throat> this is a question. Is still going to give me a peep into that. The the incoming administration had already said that if sworn in, all right, if sworn in as the next government is going to continue with the legacies of the outgoing administration. And what are the legacies of the outgoing administration? Part of what we are facing. Mm. So that means <coughs> of what use? So there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, well, as is, as is, I cannot predict mm. the incoming administration. I first of all want to see the extent of its readiness in terms of one putting up a cabinet that is competent policy statements for the first one two months policy execution all right in the first one two three months and uh, the issue of economy and insecurity being reversed in the first two three months then i will say yeah hmm. these people are ready unlike when this particular admission came in a lot of euphoria everywhere but very unfortunately under six months people started losing hope eight years 
So I don't want to be counted. You, you remember what I said during the INEC chairman's uh, promises. I was promising Nigerians to drop their voters party, go out there and vote. Uh, Mahmoud has said this, he will do this. He will do. At the end of the day, what happened? I have to start apologizing to Nigerians because, yes, we are all humans. So I don't want to start apologizing again. Mm. I just want to leave this government to go. Another government will come in. And then I will now study that government okay. for the first three months to now know what to say. You just mentioned policies. Uh, but that, you know, that kind of struck a chord with me. We've seen situations where Nigerians are, uh, are embarrassed all over the world. Nigerians just get into situations where the government is supposed to like come and para on our behalf. And we see none of that happen. That is aside from what is going on in Sudan right now. Uh, you, are there no <clears throat> policies that you know kind of protects a Nigerian that is outside the shores of Nigeria? For example, an American, an average American anywhere in the world, you cannot. There are certain things you cannot do to him because America will come for you in its full force. And you see that you you see other you know citizens of different countries, especially in the West, they enjoy these types of you know protection. What is it for a Nigerian outside the shores of Nigeria? <clears throat> you see, that word Nigeria has been so much bastardized by successive governments, not just one, successive governments, and even we Nigerians, to the extent that even the, the marks, the good marks, the enviable, the enviable marks that some of us have been making mm. outside the shores of the country cannot even be seen. Cannot even be seen. Because one, we place no value on ourselves. It wasn't Buari that was saying that she was discrimination in Sudan. Okay? Mm. But when you look at insecurity that is happening here, you know that we made it ourselves. The insecurity of Nigeria, now we made it by ourselves. I've explained this before. Unlike, remember the, the American that was kidnapped outside Nigeria, but now brought down to Nigeria uh, 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 environment. The president said he wants that America free within 24 hours. And he did not just say it he followed it with action and what happened lo and behold they left all the way from america to our country here to free their citizen chipogas are still there within this country under the nose of presidency the sea cannot free them dabochi dabochi boys they are still there and so many of them like that they are there are we doing anything so tell me tell me how this will not rub off on us outside the country it will definitely rub off anyway there are some of us that when you, when you want to rub it on us outside there we get aggressive on you because we are different people you don't take everybody to be the same all right but then not until when we the people you and i decide on our own as one people devoid of primordial bigotry and see ourselves as one irrespective of race ethnic or religion and hold whoever is there responsible but we are nigerians we have freely submitted our sovereignty to you and these are the things we want you to do or else you will see our red eyes. We shouldn't leave it. We shouldn't leave it to even the National Assembly. Because they are all the same. But the moment we start to do that, you will see that all these people, the so-called leaders, not just political leaders, even religious leaders, Cultural leaders, all 
leaders they like economic leaders then they will know that nigerians are ready to get themselves emancipated all right uh this conversation around sudan has you know continued to continued to kind of hold people you know in a very tight corner policies and policies being dished out on the regular in in nigeria I, I, it, it kind of leaves the question actually when we have people in the national assembly the senators and people members representing different <coughs> parts of nigeria what 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 do they even go there to do like how do you <laughs> how do you have your people i'm talking about okay the cash crunch came early this year we saw governors and senators going to the also rock to make demands because they were directly affected but these are our children in a war-torn country until today there's not been even one legislation you know towards what is happening and why are these children still left behind not even discussion there, is, there has been no conversation around it. How do we get to the point where we're able to hold, you know, the people that are supposed to speak for us accountable, demand what we send them, you know, over there to do, demand that they give us premium service? When they come around to your village, you already you are already aware that you are not being properly represented. Mm. Don't you still go to them to say Babari Rebabake <laughs> to heal them? Crazy. You mean you heal them? You are making them to feel that they are doing something. Mm. Listen. This cash crown you mentioned you mentioned. The emophonics theory that Emophili came up with. How did you come about it? What are the surrounding frameworks? He was asked questions at that time now. Mm -hmm. I was on this platform. And I mentioned it. How can you say you want to change the Naira within three months? It's never done. If not because you are having something at the back of your mind. But at that, who is supposed to have oversight function on CBN? Is it not from the National Assembly? Mm. Was it queried as regards that? Even after that failure, has it been called? Has it been called to come and explain why he had put the all Nigerians, over 200 million Nigerians, into such a mess, into such a ridicule? And now, I think yesterday or so, or day before yesterday was saying that all those naira they don't know where they are maybe they will they will withdraw the new actually ones. because we have with all the money you spent on that it's with all the money you spent on that and nobody is going to query you and nobody is going to ask questions they won't ask you they won't ask questions when they are partakers you remember you remember the scenario of off the mic <laughs> when he wanted to be coming out with the issues that even the person sitting, the person sitting at this panel has it. It's just <laughs> uh, 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 this. Uh, do you, like... So do you see the whole system? It's 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 beyond. I don't even want. I want to use a better word that is more than corruption. Yeah, let's not find that word today. Let's hold it up for maybe the next time we get to have this conversation. <laughs> but it's been amazing having this conversation. I, I am happy that at least we're making progress. Those students have left Sudan yeah, finally. Man. And I feel like that is the most important thing yeah, right now. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Dayo, for coming on Ivan TV. It's my, pl my pleasure being with you all of the time. I always enjoy my time. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they could just extend the, the hours. Well, we'll look so that into we can, that. We can be doing... I mean, we can be expressing all these things yeah. in full details would be really nice but you guys are doing greatly thank you so much sir yeah. it is a still ibrand tv day break when we come back from this quick break we're going to uh into the market to find out what the food prices and how they are doing today stay with us don't go anywhere <laughs>